used to be on the same wrestling team. We were wrestling partners. My first wrestling partner. We went at it every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who won? The uh, most. When we was in practice, he did. In high school, though. A couple times. We yeah. <laughs> Knocked me out the state tournament one. <laughs> <laughs>
was when I was, you know, little wrestling, playing football, baseball. He was always there, he never missed it. He never missed anything in the world. Um, he was always around, you know. He's a great dad, like, he did everything for me. He got me whatever I wanted, you know. Came down my stuff, always cheering for me. He's probably like, the loudest person always there. Always hear him. If I was winning to lose, and I always hear him. If I got, you know, frustrated, you know, he'd, come, he'd come handle it, you know. He showed me how to be a man. He, uh, my dad, he passed away when I was uh, 15 years old, my sophomore year of high school. And I was wrapped like the state tournament for wrestling. So it would be hard or whatever, you know, it was bad. And, uh, I got the news when I was at school too, so it was, it was weird. And, uh, I dedicated my next two years of high school for him though. My junior year, we won a state championship in football. And the senior year, I placed that state. Just trying to do, you know, do it for him going to college, you know, trying to win a national title for my dad. And uh, see how that goes. Your younger brother coming up in your footsteps, wrestling and playing football. My little brother, he going to the same high school as me. He was wrestling, playing football. Um, it's looking good for him. He's, he's bigger than I was. He already 100 and like 40 pounds or something like that. I went up like 100 pounds going into my freshman year. So I think he, uh, he'd be a great football player going by the West. He'd be a great running back there, great wrestler there. Should be a four-year starter for the wrestling team. Um, looking forward to see what he can do in high school. He's a, he a real good athlete. What example of inspiration did your older brother leave on you? My older brother, he, um, he definitely showed me how to be tough. Smack me around a lot and let me uh, he see me out there playing football. We were la last year in high school. If I hit somebody hard enough or I ain't come up fast enough on the play, he'd be yelling top of his lung, you know, rack, around me and my dad or whatever. Uh, always, at, always at the events, you know, and let me make sure I'm focused. You know, make sure I'm focused, you know, trying to keep me out of trouble. So they don't see me get in trouble. You know, I got a bright future ahead of me. So he's trying to, you know, keep me on the right path. You mother. Raising three kids after the death of your father. My mom, she's a strong lady. She was, uh, she stayed right by our side, you know, when my dad passed away. And everybody, you know, calling, you know, trying to tell us this, that, do this, do that. But she made sure we were doing the right thing and she looking out for us. You know, when I'm up in college, you know, she called me almost every day, make sure I'm all right. If I need anything, she always took care of us, made sure we was, we was feeling right. We never, you know, wish for anything, we always got what we wanted. What you want that man? Bell, I'm from Bellwood, Illinois. I'm going to Notre Dame College in Ohio to play football and wrestling and be a running back. And I'm wrestling 157 pounds. This is where it all started. My grandma's house. This is where I started school at Lincoln Elementary. say the least. And the day she died, I was I was stuck. I didn't know what to do. Cause everybody was calling me was like, yeah, you okay? I didn't know what was happening then. My brother walking in the house was like, yeah. Well not my brother walking the house like bawling. I'm like dang I don't I can't even just come in just just cry right away. He grabbed my mama and started me hugging her and stuff and then like I go in my room to go to sleep and I couldn't go to sleep, so I just go outside and start sobbing. And he come come outside trying to calm me down. It's not working. And uh, after that day, it's like I can't I, I can't uh, I can't let my grandma down at all. And she she is my motivation. She she makes me want to do it. Want, want, she make me want to be better. Make me want to be a better person. Cause because of the woman she was. My first time actually like dedicating something to her was the York football game and that's when I, I, I went off. I had her, her name taped on my, my wrist and on my ankles. I had about, I should have had four touchdowns, they took one away. I had about three, no, 293 yards, 
and ever since then, I, I dedicate all my, my athletic events to her. Your mother said on Facebook that you made a promise to your grandmother about going to college, furthering your education on the scholarship. Speak on that. I mean, uh, I was always supposed to go to college and, and, and do great things. Every, everybody expect me to do great. And I, I can't let anybody down. And like a couple weeks, but like a week or two before my grandma died, I was having a conversation with her about me, uh, me going to college and being an athlete. And she didn't really say much to me. She was just telling me to, to, to do what I always do, just be great. What example or leadership did your older brother lead for you? Uh, I mean, my brother did the same things I did in high school, but once he, he got older and started maturing and stuff, mm -hmm. he was starting to tell me that like school is the most important thing you, you need, you, you, gotta, you gotta do. And uh, he uh, just, just led, led by example and just showed me the way a, a, a man's supposed to be and how you're supposed to present yourself and how you're supposed to work hard and, and, and do your best and respect your mom. You got a baby sister behind you. Yeah. Is she an inspiration to you or are you more of an inspiration to her? I mean, my little sister is is like my best friend. She, I can, she can tell me anything. I, she, I'm the only person she feel that way towards. And I can tell her anything. And uh, we six years apart, but we feel like we're about two years apart. And my my only goal is to be the greatest role model I can I can be for her. Uh, my mom, my mom, the coolest person you ever meet. I swear to God. Uh, she, I can't even explain it, man. Uh. My mom, a, a very hard-working woman. She never, like, she doesn't even show emotion around me. And when she does, it affects me so badly, and I hate it. I hate to see my mom sad. So my goal is to be as successful as I can be so she won't have to be, uh, so, she, so I, I can keep her happy. Me keeping her happy will take her mind off the death of her parents, cause she lost both of them, and I don't, I bet, I bet, basically don't have my father. How was it coming up without a father playing sports? I mean, I never really thought about it, cause she, my mom, she, she, she never. If my mom was like my mom, my, my, she was like my mom and my dad, and she, she, she always provided for me. I never felt like I was broke. She gave me whatever I wanted. She still gave me whatever I wanted. As long as I, I'm doing what I need to do and I'm, I'm excelling in, in what I'm doing, she, she will continue to provide for me. She, she make an honest living. She own her own business right now, and she gonna continue to do what she gotta do as long as I'm gonna do what I, I need to. Now I know you say it's not a big, a big deal to you, but the NFL want to draft you. If the NFL does draft you, what's the first thing you're getting for your mama with that first check? Uh, there's there's no, nothing money can, can buy that, that can compensate for the, the love and and whatever and and whatever else my mom's done for me in in the past. So if if I ever do make it to the NFL, she uh. She'll, she'll get anything she wants to for me. I mean, I, I, I gotta pay her back for for a lifetime. It's, it's not just one one time. So I, I basically like have her handle my money for my first couple years if I actually do make it to the NFL. She knows more about about this than I do. This program is brought to you by Man of Heart Foundation. Willie, I do football, basketball, track, um, I'm a receiver, and I'm from Bill, Illinois.
What made you decide to play all three sports? Uh, football, I got into that in sixth grade, I think. My dad, he wanted me to try it out because he been playing it, so I tried it out and I liked it a lot. Um, basketball, I don't know how I got into that. I just started playing that since I was three years old, I think, and I liked it then. But then I stopped my junior year, so I could focus more on football. Um, track, I really got into that this year. But I um, only did it to get better for football, I guess. That's it. What inspiration did your father have on you playing football? Um, a lot. I mean, yeah, a lot. Because I know if he, if he probably didn't play, I probably wouldn't have played neither. 2020 NFL draft. How do you think you will feel? Um, I'd be real excited. Mm -hmm. I'd be shocked. Yeah, I don't know. That's my dream forever. So I'd be real excited. All right. Let's fast forward. First paycheck, NFL paycheck. What you gonna buy your mama? Uh, whatever she want. Whatever she want. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Now you are the oldest. Yep. How does it feel being a role model for your siblings? Um, I I just gotta stay on the right track. Because I know they're looking up to me. What example do you want to set for your siblings? First thing is to finish school. Mm -hmm. And second is just to do good in life. To the young kids coming up behind you, like the eighth graders, seventh graders, for you to come from where you came from, play all three sports, what would you say to them to stay focused, like stay off the streets? Um. You really just gotta hang around the right crowd. Don't be around the wrong people. Um, just stay focused on what you do. That's really it. It's me, Coach Jackson, class 2016, point guard, Riverside Buckfield. What inspired you to play basketball? Uh, ever since I was little, uh, got on the court and my dad encouraged me to play basketball. And then watching my mom like work hard made me want to work hard at the game and get better. Okay. What impact does it have on you to have your mother at the games supporting you? Oh, she's a big impact. Uh, every time at the game, she gets on me to rebound, gets me to do everything, push me to play hard. Recently, one of your biggest supporters passed away, correct? Correct. What impact did that have on you? It had a big impact. It made me uh, look at the game different. It made me want to go harder every day. It made me want to uh, push people on my team to make it far in the playoffs. Okay. Coming from where you're coming from and going to where you want to go in your life, what would you say to the kids coming up behind you? I would say um, you never know when it's going to be your last day playing. So every day just work hard and uh, make it your main focus. Focus on whatever you got to do to get better. You got uh, little siblings behind you, right? Right. What influence do you want to leave one of them? Um, I want to leave a big influence on them just to be dedicated, not just in any sport or anything you do. 2020. NBA draft, what's going through your mind? Uh, what can I do to get better? Uh, what can I do to help the team out? Okay. First NBA paycheck, what do your mother get? Big house, anything she wants, cars. Anything she wants. Anything. Okay. After the playing career is over with, what do you want people to remember about Danico Jackson? I want people to remember how hard I worked and how much effort I put in to be good.